Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this little fella right here, King of the Dice, put out by Nils Nielsen and produced by Haba. Now this is a family weight game where you're simply rolling dice in a Yahtzee style format where you get a roll and then you can re-roll twice and you're trying to procure the most citizen cards and village cards to build up your kingdom and then at the end of the game score the most points. It is a very simple game, not difficult at all. As a matter of fact, let's get down to the table. I'll show you how it works. So as I said in the introduction, King of Dice is a game where you're trying to get the most points. And you're trying to get the most points by rolling these dice to gain these different kinds of combinations that are on the bottom of these citizen cards. And if you're able to come up with that combination, then you can take this citizen into your hand and he's worth that many points at the end of the game for you. Some of these have different numbers for their point values. Some of them have an X like this fairy over here. That simply means that for every fairy that you have in your kingdom pile at the end of the game, that is how many, uh, that is how many points each fairy is worth at the end of the game. So if you have two fairies, then they're both worth two points each at the end of the game. Uh, some of them have special abilities like the hypnotist right here, where if you win this, if you get this combination, then you can take this card as well. And then on top of that, when you take a citizen card, if the color of the card matches the village that it's at, you can also take the village card, which will also be an additional two points or three or four at the end of the game for you as well. So there are a number of different, there are three, as a matter of fact, different things that will end the game. So first of all, if any one of these village decks ever gets down to zero cards, then that ends the game. If the citizen deck gets down to zero, that also ends the game. And then finally, if the village idiot uh, card deck it runs out, that also ends the game, which brings me to the Village Idiot deck. If you cannot, after rolling the dice Yahtzee style, uh, <clears throat> gain any of these five combinations, then you have to take a Village Idiot card, which is a negative point card that goes from anywhere from one to negative four points. Uh, and that goes on top of your pile and it will be negative points for you at the end of the game. So during your turn, you're gonna be taking the dice and rolling them Yahtzee style, which means that you're gonna get uh, basically one roll and then two re-rolls uh, with the uh, caveat being that you can keep dice uh, or re-roll them uh, up to two times. For example, on my turn, I'm going to go ahead and roll the dice. These are the different combinations that I'm trying to get. So I roll the dice here and I've got uh, two threes, two fours, a two and a six. So I look down here and what these different combinations simply mean, like th for example, this one here means I need three fours. Well, I'm close to that. This one means that I need a uh, straight of five dice. So I need a one, two, three, four, five, or a two, three, four, five, six. It can be high or low, whatever you'd like. This one simply means that I need to be equal to or less than 12. Right now I don't have that, but I could try to do that. This one simply means that I need to have four dice that are all the same color. Well, right now I do have that combination, but it's only gonna give me one point. So maybe I don't wanna do that. Over here, this one means that I simply need two dice that are red and two dice and three dice that are green. Well, at this point, I think I'm just going to go ahead and stick with what I have. I know I've got this one. I'll re-roll this and see if I can get something else. I do have a two, three, four right here and a six. So it's possible if I roll a five, I could get this one over here, which has a special ability that if the elf is still on top of my kingdom pile when it comes around again, I can re-roll uh, the dice four times, I get four rolls of the dice instead of just three. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep what I have here and then roll the dice two times. Okay, a one and a six, that doesn't help me at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll one more time. I'm really wanting to get a five here if possible. Okay, I do. So I have a two, three, four, five, six. So that allows me to take this card. 
So it gets me three points, and I'm going to put it on top of my kingdom pile here. When it comes back around to my turn, I'll be able to roll the dice four times and not just three. Then uh, this citizen card will shift over, and another one is revealed. And then the next person takes the dice and rolls it. You know what? I'm going to go for the Gusco. I'm going to try to get this one right here. So I'm trying to get a less equal to or less than 12, which is kind of difficult. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. Brr, okay. Last roll. Nope. Did not do it. All right. But I do have just happened to luck out and I did get four blues. And so I can use it here. And because the color matches, I get this as well. These both go on top of my deck. And these will shift down. This one turns back over. And this is how the game is played until, as I said earlier, one of these village decks has no more cards left in it. The citizen deck has no more cards left in it. Or the village idiot card uh, deck has no more cards left in it. Then we just simply count up how many points everybody has with any negatives, of course. Whoever has the most points is the winner. So that's that for King of the Dice. Like I said, it's a very simple game. Uh, there are a, uh, some cool little neat abilities that some of the cards do, and I, I showed you a few of them. A couple more are there are dragon cards that if you achieve this, you can actually give it to another person because they're worth negative points at the end of the game. So there are dragons, and then there are also these little uh, crafty little wizard dudes that if you procure this, then you can take another turn immediately. So there are, are those kinds of cards that are in there. Uh, this goes from 8 to 99 years and you know, we might look at that and kind of roll, of our, roll our eyes because uh, okay well kind of any game is like that if, if you're savvy enough but I think this is really true here. It's very simple. I think there's a, going to be a very large appeal almost a mass market-esque type of appeal for this game because it does uh, have a very very simple a line of mechanisms. You can teach how to play this game in about five minutes easily um, with people sitting at a table and then go from there. So let's get to some of the pros of the game. First of all, I've already mentioned it, it's very simple and it's going to have a very broad appeal as far as non-gamers are concerned, I think. That's not to exclude gamers. I think the, the gamers will enjoy this for what it is. They're not going to be clamoring for it, but I think it's going. they're going to enjoy it with their non-gamer friends and family. My second pro of the game is, is quite simply this, and I say this a lot, but it is... Uh, has very neat artwork. It's probably a little bit too cartoony for my tastes uh, for it to say that it's uh, fantastic artwork, but it is very good artwork and it looks very good on the table and that will make up part of its appeal for those who are outside of the hobby, so to speak. Uh, they'll see the game, they'll like the artwork on the cards, and they'll see want, want to look a little bit further. Another pro of the game are the dice. Now, I'm not a huge fan of wooden dice, although I have liked them in the past. Um, my first copy of Memoir 44 had wooden dice. But the problem with that is that the, the print started to wear off a little bit quick. This, and you can't really tell just by looking at them, but these dice are actually kind of cut into uh, the wood. So there's a little bit of a bevel that's here, and you can feel it if you if you rub your fingers on the dice. You can see that you can feel the pips are sticking up a little bit, and so I like that. That uh, these are good dice. I do like the dual nature of the dice as well. Each of the faces have a different color. You can also use them for the color. You can use them for the pips. There, there's a dual nature that's there, and I like that as well. So. So this is, as far as components are concerned, I guess you could say. So as far as components are concerned, this is a good game. I mean, even the cards, while they're not super duper fantastic, they are durable card stock and they have a good heft and feel to them. But with all that being said, I do have some problems with the game. And again, I don't want to seem over critical or over analytical here, but there's just some things that I just didn't like very much about this game. First of all, this deck right here, these guys, the uh, Village Idiots, that if you don't 
get anything else, if you don't get any good cards, not only do you miss out on getting a good card, you have to take a bad card. I do not like that game mechanic at all. And this is a huge uh, con for me because it kind of double punishes you for not being lucky enough to roll the right combination. Now, granted, there are five different combinations out here usually uh, throughout the course of the game on your turn. So you probably should, unless you're pushing your luck and, and, and going that route, you probably should be able to roll one of the combinations more often than not. But at the same time, why... Why pour salt in the wound? That's that's why that's what I don't like about this. It's like, oh, you didn't do good? There. Maybe you'll do better next time. Another con of the game is that the way you have to play the game, it seems like a push your luck game. Um, but because of these guys, it really turns into not a push your luck game, but a play it as safe as you can game. Because you are really hoping that on that first roll, you get one of the combinations that's out there. And then you can possibly roll to better, to get a better card with the dice that you have left over. And you just kind of sequester those original dice that got you that very low card more often than not. I mean, there's always the thing where you roll the 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 combination that you need for the highest point on the first roll and hey hey look how good you did no you just you, you know statistic one for you today so i i you i love dice rolling games i really do but this has uh really no mitigation of the dice whatsoever and because of that i've really disliked it because i love dice rolling but i want to be able to have at least some control over the dice you know maybe have a power on one of the di uh, uh, on one of the citizen cards or maybe in the villages the different villages or something like that if you have that village in your kingdom pile you get to uh flip a die over to its opposite side or plus or minus by two or something to that effect and it's only on one die something that helps me have more control and it's not just a luck fest so all in all, I think this is going to be, you know, as a family weight level game, this is a, a good purchase for you to make for a gateway or something to that effect for uh, a bunch of your friends and family and or family that, that, that aren't in the hobby but do like Yahtzee or something to that effect. Why would you choose this over something like King of Tokyo? Well, there is a level of simplicity that this has that King of Tokyo doesn't have. So that will give you, I guess, a little bit of bearing on how simple this game is if I didn't do a good job during the explanation part. So, ah, oh goodness. Again, I, I don't want, I feel like I'm giving a lot of fives out, but I think that's where this one falls. And again, on the, on the same side, this is something that I can play with all of my family, including my seven-year-old, even though the box says eight to 99. He can roll dice and match colors and numbers and that kind of stuff. So it's it's fine. So I'm going to keep it in my collection because I can include him with everybody else. But from a gamer's perspective, um, it, it's just getting a five because it's really middle of the road. And I think there are other games out there that basically do the same thing in a better way, in a more gamery way, but still retain that gateway level. So that's it from me for King of the Dice from Haba. We'll see you guys on the flip side.